I'm off to the cash and carry. I'll be back now if anyone wants me. Right. Oh, we are nuts. Oh, better get some more. All right, I'm cleaning stuff. Yep. You all right, Pam? Yeah. Has Diane gone back? Of course, she didn't hang around long. I suppose Paris does have its advantages over Walford, eh? Yeah, I suppose it does. Right, I'm off. Oh, Pat? Yeah? Can we have a word later? What about? About you working here. Is everything all right, Sharon? I do need this job, Yeah, you yeah, know? nothing's wrong. I just thought it was about time we had a race, that's all. A little one. About an hour, all right? Yeah. Sharon! Sharon, you've left... Oi. Did you finish the milk off? Oi. I haven't got any milk for tea. Have it black. I can't stand it black. Look, there's a shop round the corner. Go and buy some. I haven't got any clothes on. Well, go and put some on, then. I'll get some racing paper while you're round there, will you? Give it yourself. You finished the milk off. You should have replaced it. Mmm. Mmm. <sighs> a scumbag. Yeah. A scumbag with a nice hot mug of milky tea. You always milk before you come along. Oh, shut up, Ricky. Here's a good boy. You're gonna get a job. It's not fair Pat having to work to keep you. Huh. That's rich coming from you, though. Well, at least I'm looking. Listen, sons are allowed to scrounge off their mothers. Everyone knows that. You're not even her son. Mm. Ah, lovely. Scumbag. <laughs> so this makes us all square? Yes, dear. Do you want anything from the cash and carry, Mrs. Andreas? I'm going in there in a minute. No, thank you. I don't think so. Can't seem to find my purse. I must have left it at home. It'll be two minutes. Leave it. Pay later. No, I want to get it settled now. Two minutes, okay? Okay. I just found your purse. I, I what did you put in your pocket? Nothing. Pat, what did you put in your pocket? Nothing. I will take, take it out. What? Whatever it is you stole. Sharon, I want to take it out. I can't believe you've done this. I've always trusted you. It didn't cross my mind not to, and this is how you repay me. I can't believe it. Sorry, Sharon. I don't want to wear it. You used to run this place. You know how hard it is. Sharon. We have to have every window out back barred because people break in. Because they'll nick anything they ain't nailed down. You know that. Yes, I know. If they can't get at the till, they'll get at the stock. If they can't get at the stock, they'll steal the entrance from the yard. Sharon. They nick the bog rolls, the glasses and the ashtrays. Yes, I know. But that's the way it is. You accept that. But you're friends. Please, will you let me explain, it's Sharon? It's the lowest thing you can ever do still from your friends. Unforgivable. Yeah, will you let me explain, no, please? No, I won't. There's nothing to explain. You stole from me and I trusted you. I don't even want to look at you. Please, Sharon, let me Just get out and don't come back. I'm sad. You're sad. Get out. <sighs> Things were pretty tight even when Frank was here. You always seem to manage somehow. It might have looked that way. Is that why Frank went away? Partly. How much do you owe? You don't want to know, Sharon. I'm asking, aren't I? With interest, about 2,000. Two grand, Pat. I know it's probably gone up a pound since we've been sitting here. Have you explained all this to Ian? Yes. And what did he say? Business is business. Oh, typical. He's only doing his job, I suppose. Sharon, it's not the only time I, I've taken money before. I know. I thought it was Della. Oh, no, you didn't. It's all right. I've sorted it out. I'm, I'm so sorry, no, Sharon. More. Pat, this is going to sound patronising. It ain't meant to, it's but It's not I... just from here. What? I stole from the office where I clean. How much? Oh, 60 pounds. Do they know? Where did you steal it from? A cash box. But if you got it out, you can get it back in again. 
What's this? Put it back. No one will ever know. But... And this is to make sure you don't do it again. No, Sharon. Pat, I've been down this road myself. Oh, you can't afford this on money. I've got some savings in the building for something. Yeah, but that's your money. All I can say is don't put your head in the sand and hope it'll go away, because it won't. Well, what else can I do? I clean here. I clean at the offices. Well, can't your boys help? Some of the debts, David's. But you got all that money from the stall. It's gone. Gone? There must have been thousands. There was, yes. Well, it can get some sort of job, can't he? I'm so sorry, Sharon. I'm so ashamed. Forget about it. <laughs> I've done some bad things in my time, but I just saw it lying there. I couldn't Forget help. it. <laughs> oh, Pat. <laughs> Where's Frank? I don't know. I want ring. Oh, come here. <laughs> oh, hello, Pat. I didn't see you sitting there. You caught me out. What? Oh, I know it's nothing to do with me anymore, but I like to keep an eye on the beds. Oh. They look all right, don't they? Yeah. Oh, I miss the gardens. Oh, I enjoy the other job, don't get me wrong, but... This time of the year, it's good being in the gardens. Good for the soul. You all right, Pat? Hmm? I said, are you all right? Not really, no. Well, is there anything I can do to help? Got a spare couple of grand you don't need. Couple of... No, I haven't. Do you know where Frank is? No, I don't. You know I don't. I would have told you. Well, then you go and help me, Arthur. Thanks all the same. Yeah, hey, mate. Cool, look at her. That shouldn't be allowed. She's nice. Nice? <laughs> nice? Yeah. Nice. What's wrong with her? Sugar and spice and all things nice. What are you on about? Listen, Ricky, women don't like you to think they're nice. That's why you're making a big mistake, Sam. I'm not making any mistake. They like you to think they're dangerous or, or different. Oh, you're an expert, are you? Yeah, I am as it goes. <laughs> but then compared to you, who isn't? Hey? Yeah. When was the last time you got your leg over? In your business. There was that girl you was married to, wasn't there? She ran off, didn't she? <laughs> that was ages ago. Just because I don't go to bed with any old slapper like you do. Listen, you don't go to bed with anybody. That's your travel. Mm. Oh, I say. Nice shots. Nice. <laughs> what do you mean, strange? Well, strange. Like she was miles away. Oh, she's probably just daydreaming. Everything all right? Oh, yeah. Just a couple of service washes to do. I've left them out. Right. When I asked if there's anything I could do, she just talked about Frank and money. Oh, she's worried. It's only natural. She's got a lot on her plane. No, nah, no, nah, it's more than that. Do you remember when I had that trouble with the Christmas club money, you yeah? Oh, can I ever forget? Yeah. Well, she's like that. I'll go and get my cardigan. Frank? I don't believe it. He was desperate. Well, maybe harebrained to try and get the insurance. Well, maybe about it, Pauline. He told Diane. That bad luck, those Mitchell boys. No, you can't blame Phil. Why not? Frank's not some innocent kid to be talked into something. If he did it, because he wanted to. You had no idea. Well, of course I didn't. So I'd have stood by and just let him ruin our lives if I had. No, no, of course not. I just don't get it, then. Why did he go and see Diane? To say goodbye. Where's he going? No, it's not that sort of goodbye. It's like a, a last goodbye. A last goodbye? For God's sake, Pauline. He's going to kill himself. No, oh, I don't believe it, Frank. Well, where is he then? I mean, he just lived for the family. You and the kids, that's all he ever cared about. Oh, yeah, that's what I used to think. He wouldn't go and do a thing like this and just leave you to pick up all the pieces. He already did, didn't he? Before he went to see Diane, I had some hope. I thought he might be in hospital somewhere. Or he'd lost his memory and he was wandering about. 
And Darren turned up. At first I thought, oh, thank God he's alive. And then I realised he's going to kill himself. There must be something we can do. Like what? Well, police search. Well, it's obvious Frank's not well, is he? I've already done that, Pauline. They reckon he's done a runner, they wouldn't even break sweat. He'd never knownly put you through this sort of pain, not Frank. Like you just said, he's probably not well. No, no, he, he's all right. I, I, I just know it. I wish I could believe that. We're going to have to believe it. Do you know somebody saw him? No, where? Somewhere in Essex. Well, that's marvellous. No, that was before he went to see Diane. Maybe he's living in Essex, you know, using it as a base. What, you think so? Well, it's possible. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose it is. That's better. You see, you've got to be positive. Do you know Essex is where I first met Frank? No. Clacton, Shelley 204. <gasps> we used to go there when we was kids. How come you met there, then? Frank was there with his fiancée, June, and I was there with my friend, Beryl. Oh. Well, when was this? 1958. So you'd have been... 16. 16. Funny I sometimes forget how far you two go back. Frank said they were the happiest days of his life. Mm. Life's just like a blank page when you're 16, isn't it? He said we'd go back there someday. Sentimental journey. He never made it. Pauline, could you do us a favour? I expect so. Could you look after Janine for a couple of days for me? Yeah, I suppose so. There's something I've got to do. over there. Why can't they look after him? Because I feel we owe it to Pat. How do you figure that? Well, when Grant beat David up, nobody wanted to know, did they? Well, what's that got to do with anything? Well, we didn't help her then, but we are now. Yeah, I suppose you're right. A couple of days at CISO is probably just what she needs. Yeah, but the thing is, she's got it into her head that Frank might be there. Well, how did that happen? Well, I sort of egged her on a bit, you know. I wanted to give her some straws to snatch at. Yeah, well, it's best than thinking the worst, I suppose, isn't it? Hello, Kim. Hello. Hi. Hi. Have you seen Pat today? As a matter of fact, I have, yeah. I don't think she's very well. I could have told you that. I saw her getting on a bus. Well, that's no crime, is it? Yeah, but she had a suitcase. Oh, yeah, she's going away for a couple of days. Yeah, looks right to Clacton. Did she tell you what happened in the Vic this morning? No. I don't think she should be going anywhere. Clacton? Why Clacton? Well, she thinks maybe Frank will be there. Oh, well, who give her that idea, then? Uh, well, I think I probably did. Oh, what, she gone for holiday or something? Do you understand? She's not very well. Oh, uh, what's wrong with her? She's been under a lot of strain, what with your dad being away. Well, haven't you noticed how unhappy she's been? Well, yeah, of course we did, but I thought we was getting sorted out. Look, something happened this morning. What? You're not to let your mum know that you do know. What? I caught her taking money from my purse. Pat! How much? 20 quid. I don't believe it. Look, she's not well, Ricky, and that's why Sharon and I aren't happy about her wandering around on her own in Clacton. No, of course not. Look, I'll go and fetch her back, yeah? Oh, don't pretend you care, cos you don't. Ricky! Look, I'll go and get ready. And how are you gonna get there? Well, I'll get the train. Oh, hang about. Uh, listen, I'm a bit skinny this week. I ain't got the money for the fare. Yeah. And make sure you bring her back. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Right. Sharon, uh, do you think Fiddler's lend me a car from the arches? He might. It'd be quicker that way, wouldn't it? Oh, we can find out. Come on. Give us a ring as soon as you've found her, all right? Yeah. Drive carefully, Ricky. Come on, David. David? Hi. I'll have that train money back as Ricky's driving. Yeah, sure. Oh, and David, try the holiday camp first. That's where they first met. Okay. Go. There you go. 
See you later, then. Take care. Oh, come on, Ricky. Look, let me drive. I'd like to get there sometime before Christmas. I'm doing the speed limit. Yeah, you really like to live on the edge, didn't you? No, I'm on a charge. I'm not sure. What do you expect? <laughs> Here, look at her. She's nice. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you? Nothing. I'm just uh, looking forward to going down the coast. So, do you think he's dead, then? What? Your old man. Do you think he's topped himself? No. Nah, of course not. He ain't the top in type, is he? You don't know him. He's a one you're dead, isn't he? He rose some bloke alive. It was on an the accident, car. all right? Yeah, of course it was. Look, if you don't want to come, don't. What, I leave my beloved mother in your capable hands? Get out of it. You're up to something, aren't you? No, I'm not. I just want to get Mum back. I mean, who's going to buy the milk if she goes over, eh? <laughs> Slept in a car listening to someone snore all night. Hey, before that, how many hotels did you check? None. You don't even monkeys, do you? Ah, I looked in the pubs instead. You know my mum. You didn't see her. I had a bloody good time looking, though. Know? You don't even know if she's here. Drink us a cafe around here. There's one behind you. Oh, yeah. Come on, then. Unless you buy me a bit of breakfast. Then. stay together after I was born? No. Three years. Sorry, I don't know. There, yeah, there's a lot you don't know, Ricky. Three years. And most of that time, she was on her back in other blokes' beds. So, no, we didn't do a lot of holidaying together. You don't like her, do you, Pat? Well, why'd you come back, then? Because I needed somewhere to go. She owes me. How long are you going to stay? It's hard to say, really. I've got my feet pretty nicely under the table now. I'll get fed. What? I, I don't want you hurting Pat, all right? It's not me who's hurting her, mate. It's your precious father. He's got his reasons. Yeah, of course he's got his reasons. <laughs> Burned about to death, didn't he? I do. I'd say I blame him. I'd have done a runner myself. Yes, he's done a runner. Ricky, mate, I'm touched by your loyalty and everything, but don't delude yourself. Unless he's been whisked away by aliens, and let's face it, a used car salesman from Wolford would be an odd choice. He has done a runner. You coming? Yeah. Well, I'm ready. Then you're worried about her. To be honest, I think your dad shooting through was the best thing that could have happened to my mum. Well, it just shows you don't know her then, doesn't it? She loves my dad. If I had a pound for every bloke my mum said she loved, I'd be in Rio, not Clayton. She loves him, you know she does. I want to go and look for her. Are you coming? When I'm ready. Don't you care? Of course I do. That's my meal ticket you're talking about. Excuse me, love. Julie Brown here. I wonder if you can help me. I'm, um, looking for the holiday camp. All right, Mum? What are you doing here? Well, I just thought I'd come and say hello. Yeah. How did you know I was here? Auntie Pauline said you might be. <laughs> Look at you, Mum. Go home, David. What the hell are you doing here? 
<laughs> this is none of your business. Come on, let's go on, mate. <laughs> oh. This is where I met Frank. What, in a car park? It wasn't a car park then. It, it was chalets. Well, look, there's no point in crying over a car park, is there? I thought he'd be here waiting for me. I thought I'd just open the door and he'd be there. <laughs> Frank. <laughs> Right, let's go and find Ricky and we'll get on. I've come to find Frank. He's not here, Mum. You don't know that, David. Mum? You don't want him to be here. Look, that's not true. Things were perfectly all right between us till you come along. If you say so, now come on, let's get out. No, get off me! I don't want you! I want Frank! Mum, he's not here. You're making a complete fool of yourself. You never liked him. All right. I'm glad he's gone, if that's what you mean. I thought you cared. Did you? You came to the morgue. You contacted the missing persons for me. No, I didn't. What? I didn't go to the missing persons, do you? What was the point? You told me you did. I lied. You let me hope that people were out there looking for Frank. What have we ever done to you? You just can't see it, can you? How do you think it looks to me, you running around the country after some bloke who hasn't even had the... Happens to be my husband. Yeah, and I'm your son. Don't remind me. Don't you think I deserve the bit of your time? I brought you up for 16 years, David. How much more time do you want? No, no, no. We occasionally spent the night under the same roof. That ain't the same thing. All right. I wasn't the most wonderful mother in the world. Ah, you weren't a mother at all. I'm surprised you took the time out to go to the hospital and have me. Can they deliver babies in the pub? Oh, I made a few mistakes. No, no, no. You never make mistakes. You can only make mistakes when you're trying to do something. You never tried. You never gave a toss. Anything else? What about my dad? He was a decent enough bloke, wasn't he? I suppose, yes. Then how comes you were such a bitch to me? I was only all five minutes and you were roaring round the town. How do you think that made him feel? Where'd you hear all this? I read the toilet walls, Mum. You were a legend on toilet walls. Do you know that? All right, I was young and stupid. Pete was a nice enough man, but I wanted more. What about me? You were just a kid, I didn't think. You didn't think? Have you any idea what it was like being your son? I remember one night, I was, I don't know, about seven or eight, and I had this terrible nightmare. And I woke up, and I was feeling frightened, I was shaking. So I thought I'd go into your room, get into bed with you, even though I knew you didn't like it. Gets up, goes to your room. And as I opened the door to your bedroom, do you know what I saw? I saw you having it off with this bloke. Enough, David. I knew him. I knew the guy. I recognised him from down the market. Blimey, he could have only been out of school a couple of years. And do you know what he did when he saw me looking at the two of you? Eh? He winked. He bloody winked. That was the worst moment of my life. And I bet you don't even remember his name. I'd say I was sorry for the rest of my life. It wouldn't make any difference, would it? No. So what's the point in dragging it all up again? Because it makes me feel better. I doubt it. Do you know why I'm such a bad mother to you? You were born that way. I should have married Frank. Then everything would have been all right. Please. Why didn't you marry him then? Because he was married to somebody else. And that's supposed to make it all all right, is it? No. I'm just telling you the truth, David. If Frank and me had married when we were kids, none of this would have happened. I shouldn't have married Pete. I should never have had you. Oh, thanks very much. I didn't mean it like that. Why don't you grow up? It's marvellous, isn't it? You fooling all over yourself to suck up to two kids and they're not even yours. All my fault, isn't it? Most of it, yeah. None of it yours? It was me that nicked everything that wasn't nailed down, was you it? I never cared what I did. Me who forged stolen checks, was it? Well, you might have well have done. And the VAT fraud, that was me yeah. and all. And the yeah. young girl you used to use, I suppose that was yeah. me. Yes, because you taught me everything I know. You're right. 
I've created a monster. You know what you should do, don't you? Find a pub. Go on. I don't have a home. You got a wife and kids going for them. Is that some sort of joke? You never talk about your kids. I don't have any kids. Not anymore. You just spent an hour telling me what a terrible childhood you had. <laughs> I've only just started, Mum. So go home. Stop it happening to your kids. It's too late for that. If you don't want to go home, that's up to you. I don't want you living with us anymore. Are you chucking me out? If you like. That's my mum. Why'd you come back in the first place, David? Because I was hungry. And I needed a roof over my head. Well, go and be hungry somewhere else. If I go now, I won't come back. Can I have that in writing? Huh? You all right? Yeah, fine, no, thanks. I'm worried about you. Are you? Yeah. Thanks, love. No sign of you. No. Where did you look? I just walked around. Did you have any uh, special places? Yeah, we did, as a matter of fact. We first got it together in a chalet at the old camp. Yeah? Chalet 204. <laughs> Should we go and look there? I've been. I ain't there anymore. It's a car park. <laughs> Anyway, me and this girlfriend come to Clacton for a bit of a giggle. Boy, crazy we were. We went in for this competition. It was like a beauty contest. Yeah? Well, don't sound so surprised. I was quite a looker in them days. How old were you? 16. Anyway, I was standing up on this platform, trading me stuff, and I saw this boy looking at me. Talk about X-ray eyes. Thought he could read the label on my swimsuit. Oh, Dad? Yeah. Oh, he was a handsome devil. Shame he was... Why? Was he with someone? Oh, I don't remember, Ricky. Yes, you can. He was with my mum, wasn't he? Yes, I think he might have been, yes. You and Dad got it together behind my mum's back? Well, not exactly, no. They weren't married or anything then. It's all the same. If you're going to go all moral on me, I won't tell you anything else. Say again, please. Look, uh, don't worry, forget it. So, uh, what happened after you went back to London? Thank you, mate. You and Dad? He married June, you not lived back ever after. I married Pete and didn't. What, you never saw each other again? Of course we did. We live in the same house, don't we? Do you know what I mean. Did you see him when he was married to my mum? I don't think that's up to me to say, Ricky. I think you should ask your father. How am I going to do that? I don't want you to get upset, man. You did see him. I couldn't help myself. I was in love. <sighs> Behind my mum's back. I loved him. I was so angry when he went and married you and I went and married Pete. It was the worst thing I ever did. Is that when David was born? <sighs> Is that a rough ride, Ricky? Yeah. <sighs> Doesn't mean he has to take it out with the rest of us. Don't judge him too harshly. What were you speaking about this morning? Raking up the coals, then walking all over them. It's all the years I was growing up, you and Dad would... Off and on. Yes. I can't believe it. I knew it was wrong, Ricky. I knew it was killing the rest of my life. But I could sooner stop breathing than stop seeing Frank. It just makes me feel a bit funny. It was a long time ago. Sort of disloyal. That was my mother. Ricky. That was just something on the side. He'd never have left you lot. God knows I asked him often enough. It's charming, that is. Was he a good dad? Yeah. Well, you don't sound too sure. Well, it's, 
You weren't cuddly or anything. I was quite scared of it, to be honest. What, a Frank? He's a pussycat. Well, he didn't dote on me or anything, you know, like some dads do. I bet he did. No, I'd... I had to do something really special before he took any notes of me. I wasn't good at school or anything. I suppose I did anything special, really. That's not true, Ricky. It is. It's all right. It doesn't matter. He's proud of you. I don't know. Why should he be? Because you're his son. You know, I've got no job, no girlfriend. I'm still living at home. That's what families are for, Ricky. You know when all that business happened with you and Sam? Not when she left me. No, when she went away. When she left me. We were lying in bed one night, talking about you. Yeah? Well, don't sound so surprised. We talked about your kids all the time. What were you saying? Well, to be honest, Ricky, I was a bit worried you might do something stupid. Yeah, I did consider it. So I said to your dad, I said, you worried that Ricky might, you know? What do you say? Nah, not worried in the slightest. Yeah, that'd be right. Because he ain't the quitting type. He said that? He said, Ricky's a fighter. Not a flash fighter, but he sticks in there. No matter what life throws at Ricky, he'll come bobbing back up again. He said that? Ricky. Is, is he coming back, Pat? I don't know, darling. I'm sorry, I don't know. <sighs> Them. I don't think I want to know. Not like that, silly. I remember one evening we were smacked about in our dodge and Frank was showing off and everything. Yeah, that would be right. <laughs> We've been bashing into this old bloke and his wife, really give him a crack. That sounds like a right oodlum. <laughs> the trouble was, Ricky, he was wearing false teeth. They shot up his head like they'd been fired from That's his gun. Terrible. I'm no love for you to have seen the look on his face. Do you know, I laughed so much on nearly cracked a rib. <laughs> I remember that life. It was yesterday. Come, let's have a go. What game? One of them? Yeah, why not? Get out of my dodging days are well over. Rubbish. Just put the teeth in your pocket. <laughs> you cheeky monkey. Just for that. Sharon gave it to me. Wasting it, are we? We're having a good time. Yeah. Uh, what should we do now? I think we should go home, Ricky. What, well, Albert Square? I don't say it like that. Oh, no job, no girlfriend, no dad. There's not much to look forward to, is there? So? I've got no husband, two jobs, no money. I owe here and a fortune. And I've got an upset little girl to bring up. What are you grumbling about? Yeah. Well, we've got each other, haven't we? Yeah. There you are. I see Almighty telling us to go home. 
Come on, we're buckets down. Oh, he died in here. It's David's feet. Yeah. What are we going to do about him? David. Yeah, we can't just leave him here. Yeah? Can't we? Yeah. Well, we're going to have to get another one. Yeah, but we can't just leave him here. Well, we're going to have to get another one. Well, we're going to have to get another one. Well, we're going to have to get another one. Well, we're going to have to get another one. Well, we're going to have to get another one. Well, we're going to have to get another one. Well, we're going to have to get another one. Well, we're going to have to get another one. Well, we're going to have to get another one. Well, we're going to have to get another one. Well, we're going to have to get another one. Well, we're going to have to get another one. Well, we're going to have to get another one. Well, we're going to have to get another one. Well, we're going to have to get another one. Well, we're going to have to get another one. Well, we're going to have to get another one. Well, we're going to have to get another one. Well, we're going to have to get another one. Well, we're going to have to get another one. Well, we're going to have to get another one. Well, we're going to have to get another one. Well, we're going to have to get another one. Well, we're going to have to get another one. Well, we're going to have to get another one. Well, we're going to have to get another one. Well, we're going to Looking for dead? No, I was looking for ghosts. You can't live in the past, Ricky. David's doing that, and it's killing him. You can have your memories. There's nothing wrong with that. But you can't go back and find your past. Chances are they built a car park over it anyway. Should we go in there? It's worth. I think you've done the right thing. You can't live in the past, can you? No. If he comes back, he comes back. If he doesn't, I can't let it ruin the kids' lives. Sort of fresh start. Exactly. I'll put that money back in the office cash box this morning. Good. No one saw you. They'll be a bit surprised, though. They'll probably think it's Christmas. <laughs> That's their problem. Mm. Right, Pat. No, I'm shattered. Listen, uh, I was thinking. You ain't just got out of bed, have you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, but... Ricky, I've done two jobs already. I thought we were in this thing together. We are, but... Go listen... make us a cup of tea, will you, I will. I just want to tell you my idea. What idea? Well, I wasn't just laying in bed. No? No, I was thinking. This time of the morning, is that wise? Do you want to hear this or what? I'm sorry. I'm all ears. Right. Students. Pardon? Students. That's the answer to our money problem. You can't eat students, Ricky. I think there's some sort of law against no, that. No, we take them in. I mean, they get grants for accommodation, don't they? They're always desperate for somewhere to live. And where are these students going to sleep? In my room. And where are you going to sleep? In there. And how many students you could have put in your room? Well, I thought we could get bunk beds. I mean, I was looking in the Gazette and they're asking, like, 45 quid Ricky, for a chair. Ricky, who's going to tidy up, clean up after them? They do it themselves. Me? That's all do it. Well, I can help. It's a nice idea, Ricky, but I don't think you've thought it through properly. Yeah, Pat, it's a big decision having strangers in your home. You wouldn't like it. Oh, get used to it. Besides, I want this to be a proper home for Janine, not some sort of B&B &B with strangers wandering about all over the place. Mm. We've done that before, remember? Well, that's just an idea. Oh, darling, I, I appreciate it. Don't worry, we'll think of something. Yeah. No, I'll get you a cup of tea. No, nah, doesn't matter. I've got to pop out again anyway. Get your thinking cap back on, eh? <laughs> Sharon? Have you got a minute? I should have phoned, but I... No, um, no, come in, come in, sit down. This is nice. Not really, but it does. Mm. Um, can I get you anything? Tea? Coffee? No, thanks. Right. Look, I don't want you to be embarrassed by any of this. Embarrassed? Yeah, borrowing money from a friend. Oh, so you're still my friend, are you? Yeah, of course I am. Good. So, how can I help you? Look, I, I want you to remember that anything you say in this office, it is strictly confidential. Even better. So how much are we talking about? What's this? It's a cheque for £1,500. Yeah, well, I can see that. Made out to you. Yeah, I can see that too. Look, Sharon, I don't think you've quite grasped this, right? I lend you the money. It's not a loan. This is the money Pat borrowed from you, paid off in full. Well, has she been all right? Fine. Quiet, if anything. Quiet? That's not a good sign with Janine. Poor kitty. What are you going to tell her? What can I tell her, Pauline? Her father's disappeared? No, of course not. Well, what then? That he's gone on an indefinite holiday? A business trip that might last forever? 
Well, she seems to have got it into her head that he's off buying cars somewhere. I think I'm going to have to tell her the truth. I suppose so. It's going to break her heart, but it's better than lying to her. There have been too many lies already. How did things go in Clacton? I went chasing ghosts and Ricky brought me home. He's a good boy. Yes, he is. Do you know all that time I was worrying about Frank? I, I forgot Ricky was hurting and all. I mean, he's lost his dad. That's what you've decided then, that Frank's... Gone. That's what we've decided, you. It's a terrible situation. Ricky's been great. He's not going to get us out of the financial hole we're in, of course. Well, he might surprise you. No, not Ricky. Well, I suppose he's a bit slow. Well, he's not especially fast, is he? If he went any slower, he'd stop. <laughs> he's got out of gold, Pauline. That makes him better than most in my book. And what about David? What about him? Well, where does he fit into this new life? He doesn't. He didn't come home with us. Oh. He was so keen to get you back. That might have been what he told you. He just wanted to put the boot in. Sharon, this ain't a hobby, right? People come to me to borrow money. I charge them interest and I make a living. That's what happens. No, Ian. What happens is some desperate person at the end of their tether comes to you and you lend them money. Yeah, and what's wrong with that? You're taking advantage of people. Look, I don't force them in here, Sharon. They walk in on their own. If you're going to be a scumbag, at least have the good grace to acknowledge it. Look, this is all very interesting, but I'm a busy man. Well, I won't keep you, then. Just give me a receipt for Pat's money and I'll tell you you've terminated her account. I wouldn't tell her that. Why not? That wouldn't be right. That's just for the amount she borrowed. And now you've got it back. Yeah, but what about the interest? And the interest on the interest? You're going to forget about that because you're a decent bloke. Sharon, I'm a businessman, not a social worker. Since when did you get a bleed no? Since I saw Pat take... Since you saw Pat what? I saw her taking money from my purse. You're joking! No. And if I ain't a gossip about it, I'll know where it came from, right? Yeah, well, I assume you sacked her. No. And I'll tell you why. I've known Pat a long time. She would never steal nothing unless she was absolutely desperate. <sighs> stealing is stealing in my book. What you do is stealing. It's daylight robbery. Nothing I do is illegal. Well, it should be. Well, it ain't. Look, this is getting us nowhere. Pat's a friend and she's in trouble, big <sighs> trouble. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. She was your dad's wife, for God's sake. The answer's no. She's made a deal. She's got to honour it. Take the money, Ian. You wouldn't lose a penny and you'll get a warm glow all over from helping another person. Besides, you won't get a penny if she ends up inside, will you? Look, if my customers even sniffed I was going soft, I'll be out of business inside a minute. They won't hear nothing from me. Take it, Ian. Because if you don't, the only way you're going to get this money out of Pat is if you stand over her with a baseball bat. And I don't think even you're that bad. No. How's Cindy? She's all right, thank you. Why? If people see you kicking Pat when she's down like they this, won't. they bloody will, I'll make sure of it. I'll give up, Sharon. People will get angry. We'll let them get angry. I can handle it. Maybe you can. But it ain't just you, is it? Your wife and kids have got to live in this square, too. Why stir things up for them? Sounds to me as though you're well shot at him. But he's mine, isn't he? I, I love Ricky and Janine, I really do. It's different when it's one of your own. Yeah. I can't help feeling I've, I've let him down. He'll come back when he's ready. No, I don't think so. I think I've lost him for good this time. Earn good money from home. Sounds interesting. What do you have to do for it? Mm, doesn't say. Probably stuff in envelopes. Could be all right. You could do that watching the telly. The trouble with those things is, Ricky, you have to do millions of them just to earn pin money. Yeah? Well, unskilled people are ten a penny, aren't they? Look at the trouble poor Arthur got into. Mm, I suppose. Yeah, well, what, what, what about this? Look, telephone sales from home. Well, it's the same deal, isn't it? You're on some pathetic commission that'll just about cover the stamp to post your phone bill. Not much else. I'm sorry, Ricky. I don't mean to put a dampener on everything. But well-paid, unskilled jobs are not likely to be found in a local paper, are they? So I can be an odd job, man. All right, Mark? You're right, Sharon. I'm trying the mechanic. There must be someone who wants a mechanic. All right, Sharon? I saw him. Oh. Ian. What did he say? Go and get some drinks in, Ricky, will you? Oh, you remember them lanterns I made for Halloween? Everyone liked them, didn't they? Please, Ricky. I suppose he showed you the door. Well, yeah. What's this? That's your account with Ian. But it says it on. Really? You have? Well, you will do. 
I don't understand. I paid it for you. You did? Why? I wanted to. It's just a loan. Sharon, I can't afford this sort of money. I know. I thought you could manage maybe five a week or something. Of course I could, but that would take ages. Well, I'm not going anywhere. I can't believe this. Well, what about all this interest I owe? Ian decided to drop that. Ian Beale? The Ian Beale? As long as no one else knows, he's got a nasty reputation to keep up. Yeah, of course. I can't thank you enough, Sharon. I really can't. No problem. Sharon, mm -hmm. wait. What's this? My first instalment. Decorating? You don't need any qualifications for that. No, Ricky. I mean, anything to it, can they? Just painting. No. Should we go home? Listen to the radio all day. That'd be all right. You have a painted old house? Well, no. What do you want for your tea? Uh, salad or something. Well, what was Sharon talking to you about? Something private. Seem to have cheered you up a bit. Hi, honeys. I'm home. What are you doing here? Ricky. I thought we'd got rid of you. Well, I live here, didn't I? Don't I? Ricky, leave us alone for a minute, will you? Pat, you can't Ricky! just let... What are you doing here? I was at my lowest ebb. And you came all that way just to put the boot in. I won't forget that in a hurry. I didn't mean to. Oh, yes, you did. Look, I'm... I'm sorry. Why are you here, David? I went for a long walk after we had that row. I just walked and walked. And I thought about my family. What about them? Joe's nearly 13 now, you know. No, I don't know. I've never met him, have I? Karen's 11. So go back to him. I remembered what I was like when I was 13. I mean, at 13, you're not a kid anymore, are you? I remember it like it was yesterday. What you trying to say, David? When I was that age, I knew I hated you. I knew you slept around. I, I knew I was never going to amount to much. I, I, I knew everything I know now. I think they'd be better off without me. Do you really hate me? No. Not anymore. Because I understand you. You're just like me, really. How'd you figure that? We're not very good at life, are we, Mum? I don't know what you mean. Yes, you do. There's some people who just go through life without hardly a scratch. It all just... just bounces off them. But not us. Uh, if something bad happens to us, we grab hold of it and we let it fester and blame the whole world and the people that care about us stupid people they get hurt that was some walk you went on you're crap at life i'm crap at life so i thought we might as well be crap together i don't know mum this is the only home I've got. And you're the only person who... What? You're the only person who cares about me. You do care about me, don't you, Mum? You know I do, David. Can I come home, Mum? I just want somewhere I can put down some roots. I'm sick of keep moving on all the time. But why here? Where else can I go? You're the only family I've got left. Rubbish. Look, Mum, I've explained that to you already. I'm not going back. David! Maybe one day, when I get me act together. All right, you've been honest. I'll be honest and all. This is Frank Butcher's house. I know that. And they're Frank Butcher's kids. I'm going to see they get the best I can give them. Well, I'm not going to stop you. No matter how good your reasons, I don't want you whinging because I didn't treat you like that when you were a kid. It's nothing to do with them. Fair enough. People around here have been good to me. I don't want you nicking from them or sleeping with their daughters. Mum, you really have got a high opinion of me, haven't you? David, I'm serious. Look, Mum, I didn't come back here to start trouble. 
Now look, if you can make a fresh start, why can't I? I've just put my cards on the table, that's all. And if I agree to all that? David, nothing would make me happier than to have you living here with me. But then what are we talking about? Let's just leave the past where it belongs. That's what I said to Ricky. And you're right. We have had enough bad times, haven't we? Enough for me, thanks. Well then, let's grab us some good times. All of us. <laughs> so I just got back to where the car was. I was absolutely soaked and it's gone. I wish I'd seen that. <laughs> Very funny, I'm sure. Oh, Ricky, darling, come in. I suppose he's staying. Ricky? It's all right, Mum. Look, mate, Mum was saying you was pretty good to her up in Clacton. Just picking up the pieces you left behind. I'm sorry. I've apologised to her and I'll apologise to you. I've been acting like a right idiot. I have my reasons, but uh, no excuses, all right? Come on, Ricky, you can't say fairer than that. But you don't hear the things he was saying about you and Dad. Nothing he didn't say to me face. Now, if I can forgive him, you can. Please, Ricky, come on. Look, none of us are in great shape now. Let's help each other out now. <laughs> right, let's get down the car, lot. Car lot? What for? I've got an idea. What sort of idea? Well, come on, then, and I'll show you. It's the one thing we've got that no one else has. It's just a space with a few burnt-out motors. Yeah, it is now. What you got in mind? A lot of hard work, for starters. Look, this is Dad's. So I shouldn't even be talking about it. He's not here, is he, Ricky? Exactly. Now, look, he wouldn't want you and Mum to go without, would he? Of course not. Now, everyone tells me you're good with cars. I'm all right. He's very good. So, how about this? I'll buy cheap cars, and you do them up. What, you and Ricky go into business? Yeah, why not? It's not as simple as that, though, is it? Why isn't it? Look, the one thing I can do is buy and sell, yeah? That's right about that. He could sell coals to Newcastle. <laughs> and you're a good mechanic. All the best ideas are simple, mate. Well, now we're going to get the money to pay for all this stuff. He's got a point, David. Don't you worry about that. Yeah, but I mean, no, we've no, got... No, 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 no more buts, Ricky. Not anymore. From now on, this family is on the up. You just leave it to me. <laughs> 